In the first section of the workshop, we covered what to look for in a Bauron and how to take care of it and some basic session etiquette. The last class focused on 2-4 and 4-4 rhythms, so lots of reels and that sort of thing. Uh, and now we're moving into the, the other half of the equation, the 3-4-6-8-9-8 rhythms, the jig, the slip jig, and the mazurka. Uh, to introduce myself in the SCA, I'm Lady Leah Don Lyon. I'm from the Barony of Sternfeld in the Kingdom of the Middle. Um, and I've been a part of the SCA for about four years. We joined at 50 year and we've been having a marvelous time ever since. Uh, I've been the Bard of Carrigbon even though I live in Sternfeld, but that's a whole nother story. Uh, and I'm a founding member of the Sternfeld Rapier Bards because we have so many people in our barony who both sing and poke people with swords uh, that we decided to combine the, the activities and just have a whole lot of fun. In my regular everyday life, I'm Brenda Sinclair Sutton. Um, I started playing this marvelous instrument about three decades ago when my son and husband gave it to me as a Christmas present. Uh, living in Atlanta, I fell into good company um, because there weren't a whole lot of people who could have taught me to play the Balron in Atlanta but fortunately there was a fellow out there named Peter Blaney who went on to be the Western Cultus Keltori champion in the years that I was there and he was a lovely fellow is a lovely fellow I keep trying to put him in the past tense and he's not he's still alive uh, who taught me how to play the Balron and how to get around in a session so that they wouldn't kick me out or not tell me where they were in the future. Um, I also teach the Balron and a beginning and intermediate Irish language for Irish Arts Academy of Indianapolis. And in my fun times, I play in a lot of bands. The most well known is probably Three Weird Sisters. Uh, I also play as a duo doing Irish pub music with my husband in a group called Bed and Breakfast. I play in a very traditional trio, woman's trio, that plays traditional Irish music with a flute, a harper, and me on guitar and baron called a lair. And every chance I get, I back up Shannon McGuire in her pickup band called Dead Sexy. I have the time of my life doing that because the baron can play a whole lot of rhythms, not just Irish. So that's who I am. I have a, oops, let me go back. I have a passionate love for this drum. It's uh, an all-consuming sort of thing. I'm gonna stop the share right now because we're gonna be talking for a little bit. Um, and one of the things that I noticed in the last class is that it's very lonely teaching Zoom classes as opposed to my one-on-one -on -one classes where I have such a wonderful time because I can't actually see what you're doing. Uh, so if you don't mind sharing your video so that I can see you playing, even though we won't be playing together because you're going to keep your, your screens on mute uh, because otherwise we'll never sync up together thanks to the intricacies of technology. But at least I can see that you're playing or see what you're doing and I might get a better idea of how you're playing and help you along in the, the process. So it helps to kind of scoot yourselves back away from your camera so that you can see a full view of your drum like I've, I'm able to, to show you almost 90% of my drum. And we're gonna go over just some basic form things for, at the beginning of this because it's recorded. So even though I know many of you are ringers in here, there will be people watching this later who are new to the bell run. So playing the Balron, you want to be sitting in a chair, not like the one that I'm sitting in. This chair has arms, uh, and you don't want arms on your chairs. You want to be in a little stoolish, sort of three-legged, armless chair. If you have to sit on one with arms, 
you sit all the way forward on the chair where your bottom is just barely touching the cushion so that most of the chair is sitting way far back behind you. And you put your legs in an open V, good solid plant. Your drum rests on your non-dominant side leg with your non-dominant arm behind it and secured, resting right there on top of, of the knee. And you want to canter the drum out a little bit away from the leg. Going the same direction as your leg, you want it kind of poking in a little bit so that it's sticking out into this open well that you have between this, the opening of your two legs. That well is important because most of your, your movement is going to be up and down, up and down, and you've got to have that free space there. It's one of the reasons why playing in skirts and kilts it can be a little difficult. Um, I recommend that people play in three-quarter length sleeves or full length sleeves. If you're going to be practicing the bow run for any considerable amount of time, and gosh, I hope you will, this area right here where it comes in contact with the drum and that you use for pushing the drum against your body is going to chafe and it'll get red and rough and sore and you don't want that. So uh, I do recommend that you, you put some medium length to full length sleeves on if you're going to be practicing for a good long time. Uh, we're going to be covering two different types of tipper positions in the course of this class because it's very important for you to know both. Most people start out playing what I call pencil style. They hold the tipper like you would be holding a pencil. And they play with the pointy end of the pencil striking the drum and the eraser end of the pencil being top notes. And you hold it very much, very nice and loosely on your hand and you gently curve your hand and then curve your arm over. You're mostly going to be striking with this part of the tipper in the three to six o'clock area of your drum, right down here. You're playing right down here. And the tipper doesn't really go all over the drum unless you want to be flashy. You can be flashy and play all over the drum if you want to. But by and large, you're going to be focusing on this part right here, right there. I'm going to stick this light back a little bit so you can kind of see where my hands are. You can see my hand behind there now. So right where my hand is in that three o'clock area, and you're going to be playing right in the center of your palm, right there, right there. That's where you're aiming most of the time. And with your hand against it, you're going to get a very flat sound. If you pull your hand away, you're going to get a big boomy sound. So this is what I mean by pencil style. Uh, but the other style is called stick style. Stick style, you can, uh, if I can get in here, you can see there's kind of a knob on my, my tippers. You take this whole thing and you pull your hand all the way back so that you're holding on to the back edge of it. You're still holding it very much like you would if you were going to be painting, think of it as a, a paintbrush or a, a pencil, but your hand is way far back in the back part of the tipper. This stick style is famously played on the west coast of Ireland. Uh, it's called carry style. And it is a very spare and sparse style. It's meant to be played close to the rim edge of the drum. And when I mean rim edge, I mean the entire rim of the drum. So you're not just playing down here at three to six o'clock, you're playing way up here at noon and one and two and three. It's meant to play, to play all around this rim edge. It's a very musical style because you get a lot of notes, a lot of different tones out of it. Um, but it's also, you, you run the danger of hitting rim shots with it if you're not really, really careful. Um, and the only way that you're going to get really good triples playing this style is if you incorporate the back hand, the left hand, by tapping on the back of the drum. That's where your triple comes from when you're playing this style. So you're just So you're just running your, your fingers back here. 
And we'll go into this a whole lot more in the next style. I just want you to be aware of it when I ask you to play this stick style and you want to throw in triples, the only way you're going to get a triple is to put it back here. You can get it this way, but it's a very slow and clumsy kind of triple. So that this is a, a more elegant and magical way of playing the triple. You don't tell people who don't play the Balron that that's what you're doing. So when you set yourself up on the stage in playing in concerts, you show them this side of the drum. You don't show them this side of the drum because that's where all the magic is. They, you convince your audience that you get all the notes out of the stick and you really don't. All right, so we're gonna be concentrating on the other half of the Irish musical genre. When, when you get into sessions, it's almost always jigs and reels, jigs and reels, jigs and reels. So I'd say 40% of the tunes that you hear will be reels in 4-4 time, and then 40% of them will be jigs, slip jigs, um, and mazurka type things in the 3-4, 6-8, 9-8, realm that makes up 80 percent of everything that gets played in irish sessions then there's the offshoot things little things that don't get played very much barn dances slides weird weird stuff that fill up the other 10 percent and don't get played too terribly often but if you know jigs and you know reels you can play in any session you walk into any session anywhere because these rhythms fit those tunes everywhere you go a jig is a jig is a jig a reel is a reel is a reel if you know a basic reel pattern and they start playing a reel you can play along with it it's going to fit and the jigs that i'm going to teach you tonight will fit with every jig that's out there the slip jigs will fit with every slip jig that's out there the mazurka will fit with pretty much every mazurka that's out there. That's, that one's a little bit weird. But once you get this pattern, you can make it fit. Any jig that comes down your trail, it's gonna, it's gonna work for you. And then your joy after that is making it more like the tune you're listening to. Kind of molding it and crafting it by picking and pulling notes in and out and that's your choice. We'll get into that more again in the next session as well. So let us dive in. I'm going to go back to the share screen. I'm not going to spend a lot of time with the share screen up. I'm just going to basically show you what these rhythms look like, and we'll go through them slowly, and then I'm going to take the screen down so that we can play and see each other playing. I think that'll be more fun. Okay, so the first rhythm that we're going to be talking about is the basic jig. And this is what it looks like. Uh, there is a basic drum notation out there, but I don't use it because the Balron actually has a front side and a back side to it, and other drums don't. And it also has different notes to it that um, other drums don't get. And it's easier to understand it in a series of down and up strokes. So the big red arrows are the, the notes that you hit a little harder than all the rest. Uh, and that's always going to be the one. The one, the one, the one. It's so important in Irish music because these were dance tunes. If the dancers can't find the one, they get lost and then they get grumpy and you don't want grumpy dancers. So your job as a Bauron player is to always be reinforcing the, the one, that first beat. Jigs are in 6-8 time, which means there's six beats to a measure, and a quarter note gets one count. And there's a mnemonic that goes along, just like there was with the reels. The reels mnemonic was watermelon, 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 watermelon. The jigs mnemonic is not as creative. It is jiggity, 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 which is, you know, doesn't take much to remember, but it'll keep you in line with that that. One, two, three, four, five, six, jiggity, jiggity. One, two, three, four, five, six, jiggity, jiggity. And the one is the harder number. So playing in pencil style to start out with. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 One, two, three, four. 
This is the basic jig rhythm. So when you take this jig rhythm, uh, the, the jig, just like the reel, has a mother of all. Uh, the mother of all term refers to the mechanism on a spinning wheel where the threads are all gathered up together. Without the mother of all, the spinning wheel is just a fancy flower planter. Um, it doesn't work well. So, oh, I think I have moved my mother of all. Oh, here's the mother of all. We'll have to go back for the other one. So the mother of all is a little more complicated. Philosophy of Bauron playing. The music of the Bauron comes from the silences, the places where you choose not to hit as much as it does to hit. So I've, I've created this little blanked out arrow in here that indicates places where your arm continues to make the motion, but the tipper does not connect with the hide. It is an unvoiced sound here. So the first note is the heavy one. The next note, the arm still has to come up in order to complete the pattern. So that one doesn't touch the hide. Then the next note, the three, is going to come down, but you're not going to hit it as hard as the one. Three, then up on four, then down on five, then up on six, then hard on one, then up on two and don't touch, then down on three, up on four, down on five, up on six. So this is the first line of an A part for the jig, for the mother of all, and it ends up sounding like this. just the first line. Now if you play the second line, it's just down, four, five, six. It's just the basic jig rhythm. So we're taking the mother of all line and then running right behind it with the jig rhythm. So with the first line, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. Then the second line, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So let's run through these a couple of times. Down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, 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 down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, 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 down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, 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 down, up,
our A, our first line and our second line of the A. Now the second part, you can you can change this line and substitute it out for this line. So you have choices. You can play your first line with this time, the first time through your A part, and then the next time you can play this line with this line, the next time through the A part. And you can alternate back and forth between them. Uh, it just keeps it interesting so that you're not quite, you don't get quite so bored playing the same rhythm over and over again. So let's take a look at this second A part line. It is a down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And then you don't play those last two notes. Uh, you don't, you can move your hand in the rhythm without connecting if you want to. You don't have to. Uh, very often this arm becomes very mechanical and it just keeps going and going and going and whether you connect or not. So uh, that's entirely up to you. So let's play the first line with the second line and then play the first line with the third line, the first line with the second line, the first line with the third line. And down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, 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 down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, 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 down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, 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 down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, 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 You've now gone completely through the full cycle of this portion of the tune. Now the tune will change to the B part, and very often the B part is just the jiggity, 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 on and on and on and on and on and on forever. Um, and there are ways to make it more interesting, but we'll go into that in the fourth class. So if we were going to be playing this, let me think Okay, so down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, 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 down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, 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 down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, 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 down, down, up, 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 down, through the A part and the B part successfully. So now you would repeat that two full more times to make it all the way around, get to the end of this portion of the set, and then you would change tunes and play another jig. Now your challenge is to take it at this speed and gradually start ramping up the speed. So this is a good slow speed, but no one would dance this at this speed. Nobody would go this slowly to dance it unless it was really, really late in the night and they were well into their cups. So your challenge is to get yourself a metronome if you don't already have one, set it at this speed, practice it at this speed until you feel really comfortable with this pattern, and then start inching it up speed by speed, just a notch at a time, until you start getting it up to true speed. So here is the speed at which you would be playing it in a session. how fast you need to work yourself up to because that's the basic jig rhythm that's how fast the dancers are going to want to dance so 
let me take a look at my time just to make sure I haven't gotten too far. Okay, it is time for me to go backwards because I put the worst one. All right, so now let's move over into slip jigs and talk a little bit about slip jigs. Slip jigs are um, in 9-8 time and they can be a little complicated for bow run players. Uh, everyone else in the room, all the rest of the melody players, the fiddle players and the whistle players and the harpers and all the rest of them, they're going to be playing it in 9-8. You're going to be playing it in 18-8 because of the nature of the pattern. You notice this first line of nine beats starts on a downbeat, that first big red arrow for your first one uh, is a downbeat, it's a downstroke. One, then, was so we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That last nine is also accomplished the whole set of nine but you've started out exactly where, you ended up exactly where you started. You started on a downbeat, you have ended on a downbeat. And that's just the first portion of it. So everyone else has completed the cycle. But now you've got another set of nine beats you've got to finish out. Only the next set for you is going to start on an up beat. Notice number 10, that bright blue arrow that is going to be played heavier than all the rest. That's an upstroke. So in order to complete the entire pattern, you have to think in 18 or in two sets of nine, either one. But down, up, 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 down, up. And that's what you have to have running through your head in order to accomplish this. Now, the way that I have clued my body into playing slip jigs is that because these are usually very gentle and slower paced tunes, I think of them kind of like lullabies, the way that you rock a baby to sleep. So sitting there on the, on the very edge of your chair, when I'm going down the first count of nine, my body is actually moving forward like I were in a rocking chair and rocking forward gently. When I get to that big blue 10, there's the upstroke. Now I'm running backwards. And I just kind of gently rock myself backwards, 10 through 18. So down one through nine, back 10 through 18. Down one through nine, back 10 through 18. And this is what it looks like. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three. So that gentle rocking back and forward will keep you in the rhythm. Slip jigs can be a little perplexing. Very often, melody players will combine jigs and slip jigs in one set. And if you're not listening really carefully, you'll continue playing in six when the rest of them have moved on to nine. So once you realize you're doing slip jigs, this rocking back and forward keeps you in the pattern so that you're still on the one making sure that your one is always the loudest beat that you hit. Because again, for the dancers, they've got to be able to find that one. And for them, they're thinking of it only as one. But for us, the one and the 10 has got to be louder, has got to be stronger. You've got to hit it harder. Otherwise, they'll all get lost in, in the rhythm of it. So that's your responsibility. The slip jig becomes really fun when you start pulling notes out of it. So the one that comes to mind the most uh, is a tune called the butterfly. It's heard in sessions a lot. It's very easy to find recordings of the butterfly uh, and I'll let you hunt up your favorite version of it to play. But the butterfly 
has spaces in it, has a lot of air, so it sounds like a butterfly flitting along. That's the butterfly's tune. It's one of those ones that has three parts to it, I believe. I think it's got an A part, a B part, and a C part to it. Uh, so it's worth looking up. But what you're doing with that particular tune is listening to the places where the melody is not being played. Listen for the silences. And the place where the silence is, you don't play either. You can you can throw triplets in there if you if you feel like it. Now, here is my trick for playing slip jigs, and that is this particular tipper. This is two paint brushes, two one-inch paint brushes taped together with masking tape and duct tape and any kind of tape you can get that just kind of protects the edges. Uh, because slip jigs are quieter tunes, usually danced by women in soft shoe. The big, heavy, bangy, boomy, hard tipper is very out of place. It, it, it's almost ob too obtrusive to play when you're playing with the slip jig. But this puppy, and maybe this puppy if you happen to have this one, I know you do, Carrie. Um, these are less intrusive. So I'm going to turn my drum this way just so that it picks it up a better. is just there to give you a little bit of a whisper but you're still playing with the, the wooden hard stick part that's you're still getting a good solid thunk out of it it's just not a very loud and obtrusive thunk like you would if you're using a hard hard edged tipper and so that's the one that I recommend using for you don't have to worry about ramping the slip jig up in speed because it's never going to get very fast uh, the dancer is just they can't dance it that fast. <laughs> they just can't. So no one, no one plays slip jigs all that fast too terribly much. I mean, you can get yourself to where you can play it really, really quickly if you want to. If you want to play Kaylee Band Speed on it, go right ahead. But you're not going to find it in real life all that terribly much. So that's the slip jig. And, and then the next one is guy that through with the mother of all. The next one that we're going to tackle in this this group is the mazurka. And the mazurka is, you wouldn't think that mazurkas were particularly Irish, but the Irish are famous for grabbing other cultures tunes and whittling all the serial numbers off of them and making them their own. And so they did it with the polka in the 4-4 area and they've done it with the mazurka in the 3-4 area. Uh, so this tune, I'm going to go through the markings of it a little bit more than I did the others because it's a little, even though it's very simple and when you hear it, it's going to sound really, really simple. It looks complicated. It starts out with a set of pickup notes over here, right here, these two pickup notes. Uh, and the tune that I think of when I think of the mazurka, the one that comes to mind most quickly is a thing that Americans call put your little foot. I can't remember what the Irish call it, but we call it put your little foot. Da 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 Na da 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 da
dum da 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 dum da 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 dum. That's that's the one that comes to mind most often when I when I hear people doing the mazurka. It goes a little faster than that uh, when they're actually dancing it, and it it is an actual dance, so you can't play around with these rhythms all that much. So let me get a regular tipper here. So the regular tipper for this one, playing it pencil style and not playing it stick style. Down, up, down, up, down. Then you don't hit on that empty one. Down, up, down, up, down. Down, up, down, 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 down. Down, up, down, up, down. Down, up, down, up, down. Down, up, down, 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 down. Down, up, down, up, down. Down, up, down, up, down. Down, up, down, 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 down. Down, up, down, up, down. Down, up, down, up, down. Down, up, down, 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 down. So when you first start it and you play these two pickup notes and you get to the end of this line, these two pickup notes are what these guys are. So you come right back to the one. Don't pay attention to these guys anymore. And you're going to play that four times. So let's take that line one more time. And one, two, one, two, one, down, up, one, up, down, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, 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 down. Now the way that you can dress this one up is with triples. The triple is formed by three beats it's usually it's a down then the top part of the tipper and then an up sweep of the the head but it happens really fast and it's very hard to play tippers triples slow it's much easier to play them fast but it's a down tips up sweep down tip sweep down tip sweep and the way that I teach folks how to do it is to pretend that there's a pot of water between your legs and you're turning your hand this way. And you just bring your hand closer and closer to the hide until the tipper starts to connect. And then you'll get, you'll get the great. But it's something that you have to practice over time. So with the mazurka, to dress up that first line, instead of playing down, up, down, up, down, you down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, 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 you would play down, up, triple, triple, down, up, triple, triple, down, up, triple, 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 down, up, triple, triple, down, up, triple, triple, down, up, triple, 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 triple. So that's one way of dressing it up. Um, and you can choose where you put your triples or where you don't put your triples. Uh, that's entirely your choice of, of how you want to do it. So there's your first line. The second line is just so boring. <laughs> I mean, it is just so boring for the Bauron players. We don't get the 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 marvelous melodies that that everybody else gets. And so, when you get to the the B part, <sighs> da da down 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 up down 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 up down down down. That's this, oh, oh, this one. go back, ah, there. So that is this section, this, this section right here. That's what we just played. Down, up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, 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 down. Or you can play down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Down up, down up, down up, down up, down. Down up, down up, down up, down up, down. Down up, down up, down up, down up, down. Down up, down up, down up, down up, down. Down up, down up, down up, down up, down. Down up, down up, down up, down up, down. All right. And the other thing that you can do is you can throw triples all over this B part. 
So you can play down up triple 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 and that way you can make it fancier as well. So let's take the A part and mix it with the B part. Pick whichever one of the B parts you like better and play that on your end. You don't have to play what I'm playing. So down up, down up, down, down up, down up, down, down up, down, 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 down up, down up, down, down up, down up, down, down up, down, 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 down up, down up, down, down up, down up, down, down up, down, 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 down up, down up, down, down up, down up, down, down up, down, 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 down up, down up, down up, down up, down, down up, down up, down up, down up, down, down up, down up, down up, down up, down, down up, down up, down up, down up, down, down up, down up, down up, down up, down, down up, down up, down up, down up, down, down up, down up, down up, down up, down, down up, down up, down up, down up, down. So there you've got a basic mazurka, and you can play with them. These don't get played as often, but when they do show up, they're a lot of fun. Um, so it's nice to have this one sitting in your back pocket to kind of flesh yourself out. Uh, now, one thing that I, I kind of brushed over really quickly, and I want to go back. We're going to go back a little bit because I did forget to talk to you about playing stick style with the slip jig so, and the jig. So before we were playing with the pencil style, if we want to remove ourselves to the stick style, remembering that it's always going to be a little bit more spare and a little more simple on the slip jig when you're playing it with the stick style. Down, up, 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 down, up. It's much easier to play this style. It's, it doesn't take anywhere near the amount of effort to play it this way. So I'd like you to try your hand at both styles and find which one feels more comfortable. For myself, I find that I get more fancy playing pencil style, but I, get, I have more of a delicate touch if I play stick style. It's entirely up to you which one is more comfortable for you. Uh, don't let anybody tell you that one is more beginner style and one is more expert style. Uh, played well, they are both expert styles. And uh, I've known drummers who have made their careers playing both styles. There's not just one, there's not just the other. Um, so that's entirely up to you. Um, at this point in the game, uh, we have gone through all the material that I have for you. Uh, the next class that I'm going to be doing is going to be on left hand technique. So we've primarily concentrated ourselves on our right tipper hands, but the magic of the Balron happens with what you do with the left hand. And that's the part that most people don't get much practice at. So that's what I'm going to be concentrating on next Tuesday. We'll be talking a lot about tonality and finding the musical notes in the drum, because this drum is much more than just a one note thing. And uh, I'll tell you my famous story next week about the 42 notes on the Bauron. We'll also be talking about how to dress up your playing with things like rim shots. Uh, I'll teach you some of my little tricks about how to incorporate non-traditional Irish instruments into um, your musicality, things like hiding an egg shaker in your tipper hand while you're playing, or using a clave on the back side of your, of your drum to get different notes out of it. And we'll also be talking about how to arrange tunes for Bauron so that you're not just playing the same pattern over and over and over again. Uh, you get to be much more of a composer and you have to think of yourself as the bass player. So those are some of the things that we'll be going into uh, the next time that we have class. 
I'm going to stop the share here now, and we have plenty of time left in this. I've still got, there's still 15 minutes left. If people have any questions or things that they'd like me to go over in more depth, I'm more than happy to, to take questions or to delve a little deeper, but this is your time, so if you've got them, ask them. If not, we'll pull the plug on this. I don't want to. I don't want to run over anybody else. If if anyone else has a question, but I have two things. One is a request. See, there's my drum resonating again. <laughs> it, it echoes next to me if it's yes, sitting it there. Does. <laughs> it's an instrument. And I and I live for my diaphragm. Uh, <laughs> I played French horn first, and so I've never not been able to speak from my diaphragm. It do, I can't turn it off. Um, <laughs> in any case. Uh, requesting a an additional class to your lineup because it's something that when I I obviously I did take lessons once but it was a very long time ago and I pick it up often enough that I, I keep my hand in except I'm always trying to learn more which is why I love your classes can you add a listening class at the end of your series perhaps where we listen to music and try and figure out which rhythm it is because trying to figure out what you're supposed to play is difficult if you don't know specifically if that's, if you don't recognize the tune and know that that's inherently a jig or a reel, uh -huh. then you're out. This is something that's really easy to do in a live session. The problem that we have is that um, I have to get permissions to use other people's videos or other people's music in order to to do that. Um, the, the best thing is when I, if you were in my house, we'd be sitting down in front of my parlor and I have my CD player with five CDs stuck in with tons and tons of tunes and I just put them on shuffle and we pretend like it's a session and you just don't know what's going to come up. And so whatever comes up, you have to spend your time listening through that first time through the A and the first time through the B to make that determination. That's the best exercise for it. Um, let me give some thought about how we could incorporate that. I can probably put that into next week's class somewhat if I can get permissions, but you have to get permissions for of to course, the music of course. because these are being, these are, are streamed live and then people can get to them from Facebook. So th there's copyrights right. and no, I, I know all, I, I, I'm, I'm a paralegal plus a musician both. Yep. So yeah, I, I get it. I absolutely get it. I would love to be able to do it. Uh, it's been the biggest challenge of putting these classes together is that I can't have other people's music sitting underneath me without permissions. That's why you've been subjected to listening to me singing up, down, up, down, up, down, up. <laughs> what, um, what about perhaps playing a YouTube that's already out there? Well, YouTube, oh, again, do I have to have I have to check. But then, no, that's right. You're republishing, so it's yes. another layer. Yeah, yeah. I, I would have to check. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's nuanced. <laughs> yeah. What about ha listing titles of, of traditional songs that go with the different tunes? Like, well, what I can do is give you links to some places like the Finn Session area. The Finns, I recommend Finn Session for anybody who is looking for learning how to play in a session. They, they're, it's a set of, of books. There's, I think there's three Finn session books now, and there's a website out there. And these people have been playing together for so many years that they've set their entire book up in sets of tunes. So you know that every tune on that page goes together. One tune runs into the next, runs into the next. And they're okay. all good keys for each other. And I can send you links to that next time. I'll make sure that that's part of, of what I'm giving you guys. And then there are places, uh, there are some websites out there that I can also find that help you look up tunes based on their name because being Irish tunes, they often have three or four names. Of course. <laughs> right. So what we know as this is known as that someplace else. So um, I, I did, I, I still, I've never ever, even with the rudimentary skill that I do have, which I know for some places is enough, some places I, I would be so intimidated. Yes, I'm, I'm an extrovert and you know I, I can perform and, but oh my God, when I'm out of my element, I'm petrified. 
when I'm this much out of my element and I will never go to a session unless I know for sure it's a beginner friendly one. But that's not my question. That's just a statement. Oh, okay. <laughs> my question is, and, and I actually do have a question is because now that I've, I've picked up a few and they aren't the, the very simple dowel and ball that I started out with is I know that their different styles of tippers are good for, you know, different, different things, uh, different sounds uh, and different sound, you know, sound combinations. But what I'm trying to, what I'm determining is, are there different weights that are better for one, one particular rhythm uh, or style than another? Because I'm discovering that I have different weights in these ones that I just picked up. Yeah, that you've begun so, your, your... Like this is really light and this one is, is it got, got, got a bit more heft to it, a little bit right. more. Not, yeah. not a lot, but a little. If you have to play a polka in pencil style, you want a very lightweight tipper because your hand has to go so fast. If you have a great big heavy tipper, especially one that I think of as a knuckler that has this great big ball of wood in the middle of it, your mm -hmm. arm is just going to wear out. And then there are certain tippers where they weight the ends of them so that the middles are nice and slender so you can play really quickly, but you still get a good thunk. Uh, every single tipper is going to sound different from every other one that you have. And so the addiction from now until the end of your life is... How many, how many tippers do you need? Just one more. There, there is no such thing as too many tippers and... I Instrument have, acquisition syndrome. Got it. <laughs> in, in the first class, I showed my tipper collection, at, which c takes up a huge amount of a table. It's, it's enormous. I don't play with all of them all that much. Um, I gravitate to certain ones, but I've recently accumulated this lovely stick style tipper. This is a modified fiddle bow. And I didn't really understand until I had it in my hand how much longer it was than the rest of my tippers. Look how much longer it is. That is meant to be played stick style because it's got this whole extra two inches on it from my regular tipper. It's meant to be played at the rim. Um, this rattling sound that you get is, you're going to pick and choose those based on the tune that you hear. Uh, if I so it's just a question of just playing with them and seeing, yes. you know. You're going to find different tippers, like ones that have rubber balls on the ends of them, ones that are, have leather wrapped around the ends of them. You, you, there's so many different combinations of tipper, and they all make different sounds. So you just kind of have to play with them over time and find the one that fits your hand well and also gives you the type of acuity that you need to play as quickly as you need to be able to play. So it, this, is, this is the challenge for going forward the rest of your life. Just start accumulating them and playing with them and you're going to gravitate to the ones that fit your hand the best and feel the best. Anyway, I don't want to take over. I just want, you know, th th these are things that uh, I, I did want to ask, and I'm presuming that they might interest the other people in the in the room. Room. It's a, it's a good question. <laughs> yeah, the, the the beginner beginner session anxiety. That I mean, I know you went over session etiquette, but <clears throat> the only way to get through that is to a find a friendly session where they're where they're not going to squash you, All and right. and b go start going, and that's and you know that's c, that's hard in a pandemic. And c get yourself one of these. I heartily recommend them. For or resign yourself to doing this. Yes, but even <laughs> that can be a little bit much for some people who just don't want to make that much sound. You can make almost no sound. You can whisper back here. You're still playing. You're still practicing. You're still getting your licks in. You're still drumming along. You're still contributing to the music. But until you get your confidence up, then this can be a very quiet way to continue playing in the session and get more comfortable with the session than the people who run the session than the people who show up. And you just have to find find the right communities because, like I said, I'm in Chicago. I know darn well there have to be a five million oh. sessions and including beginner friendly ones. It, there have to be. You're, I, you're I have to have, hang out at the Irish American Heritage Center. And yes, you're in it. the heartbeat of the Midwestern Irish community. They're th they've got their own building for crying out loud. Yeah, and I and since the <laughs> SCA stopped going there for their event for the, for a yearly event, I never got over there. Yeah, well, even though it's only about half an hour drive. <laughs> they're there, they're, and you can't throw a stone without hitting an Irish pub in Chicago. So uh, there's sessions out there. You just have to. Find I know. Them and I know. To step into them. But you know, beginner anxiety is a real thing, and I know I'm not the only one in the in in these shoes. I know that it is. It is, 
And people you, watching this video will be in the same shoes as I am too. If you come to Indianapolis, the uh, Irish Arts sponsors a tip uh, a session on Sunday afternoons once we finally get back to playing together again. Uh, and on the last Sunday of the month, the first hour is always a slow session devoted just to beginners, played at beginner speeds, and everybody is welcome to come and play no matter what their level is. So that's a really good place to dip your feet in and get it wet. You know, once we resolve the, the issues preventing all of us from being in the same rooms, I, I would absolutely road trip down to Indy. It's only, you know, it's, it's like four hours or less for me. Because, yeah. you know, I grew up next to Northwest Indiana. I'm very familiar with going down to Indy. I just haven't done it in a while. Well, we, we've so. done a socially distanced backyard session for Irish arts in Jen Midkiss backyard, gigantic backyard. We're all sitting 10 feet away from each other and the flute players aren't playing. So, so that makes it a little safer for us and not sharing food. It's not the same, but it's as good as we can get right now. So anybody else want to pipe up? Because I, I, yes, I'm an extrovert and I have question, real honest questions, but I'm also not the type of person who wants to suck up all the air in the room. Somebody else want to speak up here? I don't have that much ego. I really don't. That's okay. Right. <laughs> we're, we're within four minutes. Of I'm good. Evelyn, <laughs> are you, did you say something? I'm good. Okay. I don't need to say anything. Okay. All righty. Well, I'm glad. As long as I'm not preventing you. anybody from saying anything, that's all. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad that you all came. Um, I hope to figure this workshop thing out. And I had a whole lot more fun at this one than I did at the last one. <laughs> And I and 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 I felt really bad when when I saw some of your comments. Be you honestly, you're a really good teacher. You really are. I just and and I, I felt so bad that you had that you had that perception that you weren't. Well, I'm I'm used to teaching where I can see people, and that interaction is important. So this this one a lot more interaction, a lot more talking. I had a lot more fun. I hope you guys good. did too, and I hope that you learned some stuff about jigs and slip jigs and mazurkas and that you go out and play them because they're a lot of fun i love both sides of my heritage <laughs> <laughs> my polish and my irish together <laughs> all righty well that's about it for me guys thanks so much for coming uh pogabogi be good to yourselves play irish music <laughs>